Welcome to Lesson 12 of the Mountain Mighty Language Class. In this lesson, we'll start a new dialogue, then we'll learn the used to verb tense, and we'll learn about the pe and k noun suffixes and what they mean. And we'll pick up a few more infixes too. In our new dialogue, Daniel and Donna are friends getting together. Daniel and Donna look suspiciously like Thomas and Patty. So, Daniel says, Hey, hey, Donna. Mi as makare? Hey, Donna, is that you? Donna says, Hey, hey, Daniel. Hesasa weuka. Hey, Daniel, how have you been? You know that hesasaka means how are you. If you add the infix weu, it means how have you been all this time. Repeat, hesasa weuka. Daniel says, yaha weu kasi. I've been fine. Notice the answer to hesasa weuka is yaha weu kasi. Repeat, yaha weu kasi. Daniel says, Hesi maka unidi taundi. What are you doing here in town? Donna says, Kas helum wasasa metodom. I am buying a few things. Daniel says, Homonan makare mum yahat hisatipem. Where is that good smell coming from? Hisatipe is that which smells. If you put your hot in front of it, it means that which smells good or a good smell. Repeat, your hot he satipem. How would you say a bad smell, do you think? Wasat he satipem. Daniel says, kan nik titet ya hot oktidom. It's really making me very hungry. You remember that ok means hungry. Okti means make somebody hungry. So repeat, it's making me really hungry. Kan nik tetet ya hot oktidom. Donna says, unim pekum yinan ka kukan. It must be from this restaurant. Pekum ui means restaurant. Daniel says, Hesmen pine pemaka. Did you already eat lunch? Donna says, Wee, humbo meni peyahakas. No, I want to eat something. Humbo meni means something. Daniel says, Lekuno pe'e. Let's, but the both of us, go in. Lekuno means go into a building. Repeat, Lekuno. The ending pe'e means let's do it, the two of us. So repeat, let's two go inside. Lekuno pe'e. If you wanted to say let's, uh, let's go in for more than two people, it would be le kernel pe'e. Repeat, le kernel pe'e. How do you think you would say, let's go for two people? A koi pe'e. How would you say, let's go for more than two people? A koi pe'e. How? Donna says, Homondi Bodoike Yahaka. Where do you want to sit? Daniel says, Unidi Chetokum Inkidi. Here by the window. Chetoku means window. Repeat. Chetoku. Chetokum Inkidi means by the window. Repeat the sentence here by the window. 
Unidi Chetokum Inkidi. Daniel says, Ha'ai Maisem Tetet Botopai Mendon Kakan. Hopefully, or probably, they aren't too busy. Ha'ai can mean probably or hopefully. Repeat, Ha'ai. Be busy is Botopai. To say they are busy right now, Maisem Botopai Don Kakan. To say they are not very busy, Maisem Tetet Botopai Mendon Kakan. Maisem Tetet Botopai Mendon Kakan. Nana says, I can kalem bedak tapo menyidi asito don kakan. The waitress is coming over right now with the menu. I use the English word for menu. I mean serve food. I can kalem is waitress. Repeat, I can kalem. Bedak tapo means right now. Repeat, bedak tapo. Now repeat the whole sentence. The waitress is coming over right now with the menu. I can kalem bedak tapo menu di asito don kakan. Now I'll go through the dialogue again without my comments and translations. Please repeat each sentence after me. Hehe Donna, mi as makare. Hehe Daniel, hesasa welka. Yaha welka si. Hesi maka unidi taundi. Kas helum was asa metorom. Homonon makare mum ya hat hisati pem. Kan nek tetet ya hat optidom. Unin pekum uinan kaku kan. Hesben pine pe maka. Wee, whom bought many payahakas? The colonel pe er. Homondi bedoike yahaka. Unidi chetokum inkidi. Haai maisim tetet botopai mendon kakan. I can kalem bedak tapo menu di usito don kakan. Okay. Today we'll learn more about the past verb tense, which means used to do. This is a lot like our English used to verb tense, meaning someone did something over and over in the past. This verb tense, like all verb tenses you've learned so far, is only for what you know firsthand. You saw it with your own eyes, you heard it with your own ears, you were right there. You already know tawamoto usas in the last dialogue. The two of us used to work together. We've heard Ka Usan, he or she used to be, in several of the recordings over the past few lessons. Here's a chart showing the endings for used to. The verb goes before the ending. So for I used to, the ending's going to be Usas. Usaas, we too used to. For we all used to, the ending's going to be Usaas. You used to is usano. He, she, or it used to, the ending's going to be usan. And they used to also, usan. Now let's plug in a verb like weye so we can practice with this verb tense. So I used to speak weye usas. Repeat, weye usas. 
we too used to speak. Wea usaas. Wea usaas. We all used to speak. Wea usaas. You used to. Wea usano. He, she, or it used to. Wea usan. They used to. Wea usan. Listen to Mame Gallagher say, I used to go around with my grandfather. The verb ehe means go with or accompany. Ehe no ye means go around with someone. I'll slow down the recording so you can hear her pronounce it. Repeat after her saying, I used to go around with my grandfather. Listen to Mame Gallagher say, they used to talk standing around the fire. You remember the verb tus doi, stand up. The basic verb is tus, and doi is an infix meaning up. Now we have two infixes, wo and noye, added to tus, tus wo noye, and the meaning is stand around. Repeat. Tus wonoye. Standing around the fire is Mumsadi Tus wonoye dong. Repeat. Now listen again to Mame Gallagher and repeat after her, saying, They used to talk while standing around the fire. Listen to Mame Gallagher say, he used to play Indian songs on his Indian flute. Magi, inyanam, yaluluni, inyanam soli, solusan. Notice how the word for sing, sol, here can also be used for play an instrument. Repeat, inyanam soli, solusan. Now listen again and repeat the whole sentence. Magi inyanam yaluluni inyanam soli solusan. Listen to Mame Gallagher say, then that group of us used to drift off to sleep. Notice the infixes attached to tui, sleep. Bos means completely or all the way. No means along, and wo means drift or wander off. Tuibos no wo, drift off to a sound sleep. You can see how hard it is to translate into English because you're always missing some part of the mighty meaning. I guess a good English translation would be, we all used to fall sound asleep. Listen again to Mame Gallagher and repeat after her. Tuibos no wo. By the way, sometimes you hear me sign off saying weyabos kas. What do you think that means? I'm all talked out. I've completely talked. Repeat, weyabos kas. Listen to Mame Gallagher say, we all used to work and repeat. Twalusaisi. Listen to Mame Gallagher say, we all used to go back to the bark house. Kapumi hubona yue usais. Kapumi is bark of a tree. Repeat, kapumi. You might remember that yue means go back or come back. Yue usais means we all used to come back or go back. Repeat, yue usais. Now listen again and repeat after her. Kapumi hubona yue usais. Listen to Roxy Pakanam say, you all stay safe, they used to say. And repeat after her. Yatminjum 
Ausan means used to say. Remember that short verb a meaning say? Ausan, they used to say. Kausan means used to be, and it's an equal sign verb like kakang. Using kausan is more obvious that you're talking about the past, unlike kakan. Someone used to be, but isn't anymore. Maybe they're no longer living. Here's a chart showing used to be. Repeat each one after me. Kausas, I used to be. We too used to be is kausas. We all used to be is kausas. You used to be is kausano. He, she, or it used to be is kausan. And also, they used to be is kausan. Listen to Mame Gallagher say, a long time ago, my uncle used to be a sickly man. Hoiam nikmononam kausan itusapem maidem. Hoyam means a long time ago. Repeat. Hoyam. Itu means sick. The infix sa means all the time. So repeat sickly. Itu sapem. Now listen again and repeat the whole sentence after her. Hoyam nikmononam kausan itu sapem maidem. Listen to Mame Gallagher say, such a bad bunch used to be at that particular school. Ka'apem means like that or such. Repeat, ka'apem. Such a bad bunch is ka'apem wasambo mom. Repeat, ka'apem wasambo mom. Mahewem means that one or that particular one. Repeat, Mahewem. Now listen again and repeat after her. Let's learn a couple of noun suffixes or endings that we've been using but we haven't explained. These are k and pe. When you add k or pe to the end of a verb, it makes it into the one doing the action. Now, before I get into examples, I want to talk about the genuine Maidu parts again. You may have noticed that some genuine Maidu parts have a different meaning depending on where they are in the word. This is important to remember. We've learned that k is a verb that means have when it's the main verb. But as an infix, it could mean might be, if you're talking about the present, or at that time, if you're talking about the past. Now we're learning that as an ending on a word, it means someone who does. That's three or four different meanings depending on where it is in the word. You're, you've learned that ma as a noun means hand. As a main verb, it means be or do. And as an infix, it means will be, future. It also means something completely different as a word ending. It means place where. And we've learned that pe as a verb means eat, but now we're learning that pe as an ending means somebody who does something. So try not to let it confuse you. We'll be practicing a lot, especially in intermediate Maidu, so that you can recognize which meaning the Maidu part has, depending on where it is in the word. Both endings, pe and k, mean someone who does, something which does, or place where it happens. They're attached at the end of an action verb, and it turns it into a noun. The difference between pe and k is that k is more permanent. It means something like always or its main function. 
The k ending could be for a job or a tool that's always used for that action. Pe is more temporary. Someone is doing that action right now, but it's not their regular job. Now let's look at examples. For someone who does, we have a verb pe meaning so, as in so clothes. Repeat pe Puyeke is a needle, the thing that sews, or a seamstress, the person who sews. Repeat, puyeke. In English, you could say, sew-er, putting an er at the end. If you called somebody a puyepe instead of puyeke, it means the one who sewed, like a particular dress. It might not be a seamstress, just the person who sewed a certain thing. Peda means steal, but if you add k, it means thief. Peda k. Repeat, peda k. A thief is always stealing stuff. But if your phone went missing, you could call someone Niki Pony Peda Pe with the pe ending, meaning the person who stole my phone. Maybe it's one of your kids, not a professional thief. Yawiti means teach school. Yawitika is a teacher. That's their job. That's why it ends in ke. Repeat, yawitika. They're not just teaching one time. That's their whole job. Yawitika. Then you can easily turn yawitika into an adjective describing another word by adding m. Yawitikum hubo. What does that mean? school or schoolhouse. And of course, when any of these is subject of a sentence, it's going to have an M in the end. Puyepem, pedakum, yawitikum, as subject of a sentence or adjective. World maker is koroyape, the one who created the world. You could also say koroyaku, at when you're emphasizing the world maker as his main job or main function. Remember that ya means create or make. Koro is world. Koro yapem is the one who made the world. By the way, do you remember the difference between the word for create and the word for name? They're both ya. Name has the stress right on the ya but create is not. So if you add the pem ending to ya, meaning name, it's pronounced ya pem. If you add the pem ending to ya create, it's pronounced ya pem. So ya pem is the one who names and ya pem is one who creates. Makeka. Let's listen to native speakers saying world maker. Listen to Roxy Pakanam. Listen to Dan Williams. World maker man. Now for practice, I'll give you an action verb and I want you to add the k ending to it to make a new word and then tell me what the new word means. Batano means drive. So your new word is batanoke, and what does it mean? Driver. This is like a professional driver. If you wanted to say the one who's driving just now, just a temporary situation, what would you call them? Batanope. So batano, drive. Batanoke. A professional driver. Batanope, the one that's driving you, maybe today. Bene'e means help. Repeat, bene'e. So, what's your new word you're going to make? Bene'e'ke. What does it mean? Helper. This could be a job like an assistant. If your friend is just helping you out today with some project 
what would you call them? Benepe. Hall means tell lies. What's your new word? Halk. Liar. Helai means gamble. Your new word is helaike, gambler. How do you think you would say casino? Helaikum uyi, gambling house. Helaikum uyi. Hanu means carry. A mailman is papeli hanu no kum maida. Listen to Mame Gallagher say, mailman. Papeli hanu no kum maida. The word for honey lake, hanu leke, is actually from this word, hanu, carry. Lek is an infix meaning fast. So, hanu leke is carry something fast. This is based on one of the old stories where a sun man who lived in the Honey Lake area used to kidnap children and came running back home carrying them. So carrying fast. Hana Lake. Bete is tell a story. Repeat. Listen to Mame Gallagher say that bunch of Indian storytellers and repeat. <laughs> You see how the pe and k endings can show a person who does the action, the one who does it, but it can also be a thing, the thing that does the action. He means smell. He k is nose, the smeller. Repeat, he k, nose. It ends in k because that's a nose's main function, to smell. Wakus means cut. Wakuska means scissors. Scissors are a tool whose main job is to cut. Repeat, wakuska. Wakuska. Now there are different kinds of cut. Here's another one. Hune means cut by sawing. Cha huneke. A woodcutter. That can either be a tool like a saw or it could be a lumberjack. Cha is what you cut, so no M. Notice the K ending can be a person or a thing. Repeat Cha Huneke. Hubas means sweep. Hubas K is broom. Repeat. Hubaske. Dadao is wipe off. Dadaoke is eraser. Repeat. Dadaoke. Honba is put a lid on. Honbake is lid. Repeat. Honbake. These two uses of k and pe, whether it's a person or a thing, are pretty easy for us as English speakers. If we think of the er on the end of English words like cutter or sweeper or driver. But besides people and things that do an action, the k and pe endings can also mean place where the action happens or happened. This one's harder for our English speakers because it's not like our English er ending. Here's some examples. Tom means bury. Tonka is a burial ground. Place where you bury. This is also the Maidu word for the Nisanan and their land, especially Auburn. Dis to distinguish whether you're talking about a person you might follow it with maide, tanka maide, for a nisanan person. 
Or for a place, you might say Tonkung Koro, burial land, or Nisanan land. So repeat the word for burial ground, Tonka. Tui means sleep, so Tuike is bed, place where you sleep. Tuike. Meito means buy, and Meito ke can either mean place where you buy or buyer. Repeat Meito ke. Again, you can add an M and make it a describing word like Meito kum hebo, store, building where you buy. Meito kum hebo. Or you could make it clear if you're talking about a person who's a buyer or a shopper. Meito kum maide. That makes it clearer you're talking about a person. A koi, go. And then a koi ka. Usual destination. Where you go is Minky Akoika, your destination. Ano means go or travel also or walk. Anoka is path, place where walking happens. If you want to say the place where you walk, you'd say Minky Anoka. You know the word badoy kit, sit down. How do you think you would say chair, place where you sit? Badoy kit ke. That's chair. Repeat, badoy kit ke. When the pe or ke word means place where, it can be followed by a postposition like di. Badoy kit kadi on the chair. Repeat, badoy kit kadi. Pokom hin kit kadi is place where the sun goes down in the west. Poko can either be sun or moon. Hin kit is go down or float down. Hin kit ke means where it goes down. Since poko is doing the action of going down, it gets the M. Repeat in the West. Pokom hinkit kudi. Pokom hinkit kudi. Let's listen to a few recordings of pe and ku words with postpositions. Listen to Mame Gallagher say, Where I was going off towards, and repeat. <laughs> Remember that Nikki shows who, where I was going towards. If you didn't have Nikki there, it would just mean where going towards, which in English you can't really say. <laughs> now listen to Mame Gallagher say, we all used to sleep in the little Indian house that was built. <laughs> Notice the postposition D was put on Yapedi, that which was built, rather than on Hobobe, little house. She could have put the D on either one or even both. Now, slowing it down a little for you, listen again and repeat. <laughs> Listen to Mame Gallagher say, lead me to my bed. Niki Tuikana is towards my bed. Listen to Mame Gallagher say, on the seat and repeat. Ta is an infix meaning on top of. Instead of Badoi kitka, a chair that you sit up on, doi and kit, up and down. Badoi taka means seat, what you sit on top of. Repeat, badoi taka. Now listen and repeat on the seat. <laughs> Now 
Listen to Mabe Gallagher say, at the door, and repeat. Just like you learned with the PEM verb partner, you can add a future ma before the pe ending, adding future meaning. Listen to Mame Gallagher say, where I will sleep. So tuibape is a place where, in the future, sleep. Notice she says, Nikki, my place where we'll sleep. But to translate it into coherent English, you are going to say, where I will sleep. So different from English, right? That particular thing. Listen again and repeat. Nikki, too, Listen to Mame Gallagher say, where they will sit down and repeat. Listen to Mame Gallagher say, what they will wear. Chi means where. Why do you think she adds wasasa after chi mapem? Remember, wasasa means thing or stuff. It's because chimapem can mean a person who will wear. She wants to emphasize she's not talking about a person. She's talking about the clothes they will wear. So she puts wasasa, what they will wear. Listen again and repeat what they will wear. Listen to Mame Gallagher say what they will sing. Maseki, so mape wasasa. Masek and Maseki show you it's what they will sing, not just what will sing. That's how you express that in Maidu. Literally, it's their what will sing stuff, which of course is a bad translation into English. You have to change it around for English. Also, like the PEM verb partner, you can add the negative man before the PE ending. The verb banak means shine or be lit up. Listen to Roxy Bacanum and see if you understand what she's saying. Banak men bedi solution. What does it mean? In the place where it is not lit up, they used to sing. Or, in the darkness, they used to sing. They used to sing in the dark. Darkness is banak menpe, where it is not lit up, where it is not bright. Listen again and repeat. Banak menpe di solution. Here are some with both men and ma added before the ending. Listen to Mame Gallagher say, in a place where people will not see. Maiduk peoples is used like the Niki and Maseki we've just seen before these pe words. Instead of translating it directly as peoples will not see place in, you have to make it sound right in English by translating it in a place where people won't see. But what about words like peke, food? You can't really translate it as a person who eats or a place where you eat. It's actually what you eat. This is another use of pe and ke words. Although it's not as common as the others, it's good to know. What you, and then whatever the action is, in this case, eat. Here are some others. Pool means pull, like in English. Pulka means door, what you pull. Toya means illuminate or light a light. Toyaka means lamp or any light fixture or even candle. What you light. Repeat the word for light. Toyaka. We hoop means stretch by pulling. 
We hoop means elastic. What you stretch. Repeat the word for elastic. We hoop ke. Wo a means hit. Wo a ke means clapper stick. What you hit. Repeat. Wo a ke. Hadoi means load up. Hadoi ke is suitcase. What you load up. Listen to Mame Gallagher say, in my suitcase, and repeat. Makit means no, as in knowing something. Minki makit pe means what you know. Listen to Mame Gallagher say, talk about something that you know. So to summarize, the pe and ke endings on nouns mean person who does, thing that does, place where it happens, or what you do the action to. Remember, pe ke. Ke is more permanent than pe. It's the main function or job. Pe is temporary, maybe a one-time action. So that's it for today. Kanim. We learned the used to tense, the pe and ke noun endings, and five new infixes, wo, bos, sa, lek, and da. Add the new words and the new infixes to your flashcards. Wea boskasi. I'll see you next time. Chamakasmin.